All right, pretties, who is ready to learn about correcting skin tones and even better, correcting them is as easy as one, two, three in our uh, quick CMYK color correction process. And this is a really wonderful way of correcting your client's skin. Uh, I know sometimes it, it can be hard to look at your client's skin and just kind of eyeball it and think, oh, you know, that I think that works. And this is really more of a precise method somewhat for those of you that need to go by uh, specific numbers or a specific formula. And again, it is uh, fairly quick and uh, fairly easy to do as well. So let's go ahead and just jump right in here and take a look at correcting skin uh, using the CMYK method in Photoshop. Okay, so I have my image open here, uh, sweet little baby, and we just want to check his skin so we can make those color corrections and those tonal uh, corrections. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is open up my curves panel. So I'm going to click on my adjustment layer icon here at the bottom of my layers panel. And I'm going to select curves. Okay, so we have that open. Now at this point I want to select my uh, color sampler tool. If you don't see it, just right click here in your tools panel on that eyedropper tool and select color sampler tool, okay? I'm going to take that and sample an area of the skin simply by clicking on it. Now you don't wanna click on just any area of the skin. Try to choose a nice uh, mid-tone. If you're clicking on the face, avoid the cheeks um, or, or any area that is overly saturated. Sometimes the cheeks can have blush or uh, some makeup. So I usually like to click right in the middle of the forehead area. Okay, notice our little point that just appeared here. Okay. Also, notice my info panel just appeared, okay? Now, this is still my curves panel. Notice when I click on properties, that's my curves uh, with the tonal line graph here. And next to it, I can click on info, okay? Yours may have popped up in a separate panel, in which case you can just click the top tab and drag it in here right beside properties. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Okay, notice where I'm circling right here with my mouse. You can see that it reads CMYK. C stands for cyan, M stands for magenta, Y stands for yellow, and K, you know what? We're just not going to worry about that so much here. <laughs> okay, so uh, notice that there are two columns here. Our first column has a set of numbers and our second column also has a set of numbers. Um, at the moment, the numbers are exactly the same, and here's why. The first set of numbers represent the color formula uh, that you have right now. The second set of numbers are going to represent your color once you've made changes to that color, okay? So when reading these numbers, you want to hover with your color sampler tool above the little sample that you had created. Okay, so right now, if we look next to C, it's reading 5, M is 34, and Y is 50. Here is the correct formula when looking at these numbers. Now, the formula that I'm going to give you is a great starting point. Yours does not have to be perfect, but, you know, somewhere around that starting point just to really, until you start getting the hang of the process. So. C or cyan should always be around a third of the value of magenta. So you can tell that the colors are pretty off now at the moment. Um, and Y or yellow should be slightly higher than magenta. Notice it's quite a bit higher right now and cyan is definitely way less than a third of magenta. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some simple corrections. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and go back to our properties panel. We're in our curves panel here. Um, and we're going to click on the RGB drop down. Notice we have red, green, and blue. Okay, 
Red also holds cyan. Cyan is complementary to red and they each correct each other. Green also holds the color magenta. They're both complementary and correct each other. Blue also holds yellow, okay? So keep this in mind when correcting these colors. So the first thing we want to do, go ahead and click back on info here. Our cyan just definitely is not a third of that magenta. So let's go ahead and work with our cyans and reds by clicking on our RGB dropdown. I'm going to click on red here. And I'm just going to click in the middle of my tonal line. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag that down ever so slightly. Okay, notice that's just a tiny little curve we have there. And this is a little bit of back and forth until you notice that your numbers are looking about right. Okay, so I really didn't move the science scale that much. It went from five to six, as you can see when looking at the numbers side by side right here. Notice there's a five and then on the right there's the six. The six is the new value. So let's go ahead and bring it down a little bit more. Okay, we're cooling down the image a bit here. Okay, and okay, so we're at 8%. It's about a third. I think we can move it even just a tiny bit more. Okay, so 9% is about a third of 33. Okay, it's a little bit less than that, but that's okay. Uh, we still have some room for uh, wiggle room here. Now, look at our yellows. It is not just above the cyan or the magenta. Okay, yellow reading should be just slightly above that uh, magenta. Okay, so our yellow right now is 50, about 50, which is quite a bit higher than 32. I still want it to be in the 30s somewhere. So let's go ahead and play with our yellows. We know yellow is held in our blue panel. Yellow corrects blue and blue corrects yellow. Okay, and I'm just going to drag the blues up ever so slightly. Let's go ahead and take another reading here. Okay, so we're at 43, we're getting closer. Okay, I'm going to click back on my properties and just pull that up a little bit more. Go back to info, I'm going to hover over my um, little sample dial here. 41, okay, so getting closer. This is the back and forth that I was talking about here. So keep making those adjustments and resampling. 39 is pretty close. I still want to get even maybe slightly closer. Okay, 37 and 32, that's within about five. So that's good for me. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at our readout again here. So this is really good just to write down the formula real quick and we'll uh, show it up here on the screen. Your formula for CMYK, okay, cyan should be reading at about a third the value of magenta, okay? Yellow should be slightly higher than magenta. Now keep in mind these um, values are for lighter skin tones. If you're working with somebody with Asian skin, you might want to add a little bit more yellow. Uh, whereas darker skin tones, you want to add a little bit more magenta. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is a great starting point to work with. Let's go ahead and exit out of our curves panel here. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a real quick look at our before and after here. This is our before. It's really quite warm. Uh, it looks like it's it's just a bit overly warm. So by following our CMYK formula, I was able to bring that skin back to its normal tone. And I can now go in and make additional uh, adjustments and enhancements to the image at this point. So that's another good rule to go by is making those skin tone corrections and any blemish corrections. You wanna make sure that you have all of that completed before going in and actually making those color enhancements and creative enhancements to your image. So that is all for this video today. Thanks so much for tuning in and I hope everybody uh, picked up a little something on skin correction and uh, have fun with the CMYK 
skin tone correction method.